At Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, the New York Mets play the Los Angeles Dodgers. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Mazda Driving Matters. By Geico over 75 years of savings and service. By the Better Network, Verizon, Better Matters. By Toyota, the Toyota Time sales event ends May 31st. Hurry in today, Toyota, let's go places. And by Bob's Discount Furniture, shop in store or online at mybobs.com. Well, the Mets' lone trip of the year to Southern California is coming to an end. The Mets will be surfing off to Denver after the game today. No more Pacific Ocean. Say goodbye to Hollywood. <laughs> Mets put Southern California in their rearview mirror. A selfie for the road. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Dodger Stadium. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling with you tonight as the Mets wrap up their four-game series against the Dodgers. Mets are four and three on this road trip. They've won two of three in this series, but if they're going to win the series, they're going to have to do it against the guy who's been the best pitcher in baseball over the last half decade, left-hander Clayton Kershaw. You know, occasionally you get to do these games where you sit up here and you do them for free to watch a guy like this pitch. Um, he comes to the ballpark early. When we get here, he's the guy working the hardest. He is the guy that in, in the game has the best insides. He's got the best curveball in the game, best cutter, great fastball as the left-hander, and just does everything you'd ever want to do in a pitching rich Dodger organization. It's one of the best ever. Now the Mets were able to beat him in game one of the division series last year when Kershaw had a rare spate of wildness but you really can't wait for that. Well you can't three walks and 64 three walks and 64 strikeouts uh, this year unheard of numbers. And in fact in his last three starts Kershaw's had double digit strikeouts and no walks in each of the three. He's also gone at least seven innings in all of his starts so all of the numbers that we see with a lot of young pitching. It goes out the window with Kershaw. They just want him to go as deep into the game as he can. He's a throwback. Well, he's a three-time Cy Young Award winner, another former Cy Young Award winner on the mound for the Mets tonight, and that, of course, is Bartolo Colon looking for an encore after his historic hitting performance five days ago. You know, there's a uh, handful of games that I'll remember in the regular season in our 11 years here. That'll be in the top five just because of how he started as a hitter with the Mets. He could couldn't even make contact. He's worked really hard at it. He's gotten better at it. I never envisioned him hitting a home run, uh, but he did. But even more importantly, you know, look at his pitching too. No one's won more games on the Mets staff. No one's pitched more innings on the Mets staff the last two innings, and he's gotten off to a quick start again. Now just 12 days shy of his 43rd birthday. It's the Mets wrapping up their series with the Dodgers in L.A. All the action coming your way tonight on SNY.
Save for every run the Mets score against the Dodgers and Rockies. We'll save 1% on select tickets to the upcoming homestand May 17th through the 22nd. As of last night, the Mets have scored 10 runs, meaning fans will receive at least a 10% discount. For more information, visit Mets.com slash runs. Now time for something to smile about, presented by AT&T Cricket Wild Wireless. And if this doesn't make you smile, nothing will. Autograph? Are you kidding, Mom? I'm going to get an autograph? <laughs> yes, you are. Cherish that forever. Let's take a look at the road ahead presented by GMC. Mets leave here and head to Denver for three games starting tomorrow night. Matt Harvey will open the series against the Rockies tomorrow night at Coors Field. Then the Mets go home. First meeting of the year with the Nationals starts on Tuesday night at City Field. The Nats and Brewers are in on the upcoming homestand. Mets looking for the series victory taken on Kershaw and the Dodgers. First pitch coming up. Mets set to face Clayton Kershaw, who is 6-0 lifetime against the Mets in the regular season with a 1.34 ERA. There's your Geico Mets starting lineup. Lucas Duda and Michael Conforto sit tonight against the left-hander. That means starting assignments for Juan Lagares and Eric Campbell. David Wright back in the lineup after a night off last night. Wilmer Flores placed on the disabled list today with a hamstring injury. Mets called up Sean Gilmore, and they have an extra arm in the bullpen. How about that .77 whip? by Kershaw so far 250th big league start tonight 118 57 on his career Granderson just five hits in his last 40 at bats his average has shrunk to 205 and Kershaw fires inside a ball and a strike that's dribble Cabrera on deck and then David Wright see the shift on against Granderson. Curtis takes a fastball strike one and two. How good has Clayton Kershaw been over the last five years? Well, consider this. He's won three Cy Youngs, and he's finished in the top three in the voting each of the last five years. <laughs> and the curveball strikes out Granderson for the first down of the night. 
play. He's coming off 14 strikeouts in his last start and just a 12 to 6 breaking ball that left handers have no chance. He has struck out 10 or more four straight starts, which ties a Dodger club record. Hideo Nomo did it. Sandy Koufax did it five times. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the guy who, when you look at Kershaw and the incredible career that he's had, that he'll always be compared to. Here's as dribble Cabrera, and he takes a fastball strike. But that he can get in the same conversation is an amazing uh, thing on Kershaw's part. Because really, since Sandy retired after the 1966 season in the prime of his career, nobody has thought to claim that mantle. That's grounded down to third. Justin Turner scoops it up and throws out Cabrera two away. Now, the last five years of Sandy's career were arguably the most dominant five year stretch any pitcher has ever had. And when you compare what Kershaw's done the last five years, he compares pretty favorably. I mean, 19 war wins for Sandy, but a lot of that has to do with staying in the game longer, though different days. But the ERA, very comparable. Mm -hmm. Consider that in Kershaw's five year stretch, and include the start of this season in that, his whip is 0 0.95, under one for a five plus year span. David Wright takes low and in for ball one. Last year, his uh, his teammate Zach Greinke at times outshone him, and that has not happened often in his career. Well, Kershaw got off to a, a rough start in April, but won 16 games after that. Defensively, behind Kershaw tonight, you see Kike Hernandez in left field, Peterson and Puig in the infield. Turner's back in there, Seager, Utley, and Gonzalez, and Grandal catching Kershaw. Usually, it's AJ Ellis. David's 0 for 7 in this series, sat last night, and he pops one foul out play. Very interesting with David Wright. 24 walks, 37 strikeouts. More than half of his plate appearances this year have resulted in either a walk or a strikeout. Well, he, he really, interestingly enough, for such an older player, he's been around a long time, he epitomizes what baseball's all about now, right? The strikeouts. 1 2. And just missed the corner. Two and two. You went a Cespedes waiting on deck. Let's face Kershaw twice in the division series last year. Beat him in game one. Lost to him in game four. But if you remember the game one start, it was the seventh inning where he walked three batters and then left the game that proved to be Kershaw's downfall. Pedro Baez came in, gave up the base hit to David Wright that played it a couple of runs, and the Mets went on to win three to one. 3 2 coming. And Kershaw, who had not walked a batter in his last three starts, walks right. It's 25 walks now for David Wright. And the first of the night for Kershaw. Look at the. <laughs> I mean, that's just, no. that's just silly, right? It was 64 strikeouts and three walks coming into the game. Well, you mentioned it before, Gary. This is walks in game one of the NLDS that did him in here yep. in Los Angeles. Well, before that walk, the last one Kershaw had issued was April 21st to Freddie Freeman. He'd got 88 straight batters without issuing a walk. And of course, his opposite number tonight, Bartolo Colon, is right behind Kershaw as far as fewest walks allowed. So it's certainly a rarity that Wright is on first base with the base on balls. Here's Cespedes, who has torn up lefties so far this year, 8 for 18 with a couple of home runs. And he swings at the first one and fouls it, and that'll make it back to the seats. David getting a no lead at first base. Kershaw's got a good move over there, like he needs it. Kershaw now 28 years old. These are the kind of games where it's hard to sustain a long inning against Kyle Kershaw. So you're looking for. A team like the Mets that's hit a lot of home runs to jump them a couple times. 51 home runs in 33 games, most of the Mets have ever had at this point in the season. And Cespedes takes a rip. Nothing in two. Kershaw's given up three home runs through his first seven starts this year. That's that cutter that can sometimes look like a slider. He has two different ones. One he'll throw for a strike that kind of runs in on the hitter's hands at the belt, and then one that goes dives down and into the righty. 
Right at first and two out, 0 oh and 2 to Cespedes. Neil Walker would be next. Knocked down by Grandal, a ball and two strikes. Grandal is a lot better defensive catcher than I thought. When he first came up, I thought he was more of an offensive kind of player, but he really uh, works hard back there. Came out of the University of Miami through the Cincinnati organization. Show with that familiar stretch. And the curveball top foul. Curveball looks different from anybody else's curve coming out of his hand. He does. He, it it kind, of, kind of comes off the top of his hand. A lot of guys will pull it down. He kind of flips it over and it comes off the top of his hand. So it almost looks like it goes up before it starts to break down. Optical illusion, illusion almost. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe it really does. One two coming to Cespedes and it's up and away. Sean still trying to get full command of his fastball early in the game. The Mets have a lineup that every person can take you out of the ballpark so it gets even Kershaw's attention here going to throw his 18th pitch. Check in on right it was only about a step off the bag. Mets faced Kershaw once in the regular season last year and it was memorable because it was kind of the the nadir of the Mets season they, they fielded what seemed like an uncompetitive lineup Kershaw threw a three hit shutout struck out 11 and it was the next day that the Mets began to retool their roster in late July swing and a miss Kershaw strikes out Cespedes two strikeouts in the opening inning for Kershaw and he throws up a zero to start the night Cologne to the mound when we come back. Lineup against Bartolo Colon tonight. Dodgers have been playing musical chairs in left field since the injury to Andre Ethier. Kike Hernandez gets the start in left tonight against Big Bart. Well, I know the uh, Land Rover numbers will tell you that uh, he's got a three and one record, but uh, hit the home run, of course, in his last start. But more importantly, first Mets pitcher to go eight innings until Syndergaard did last night. Chase Utley won for 10 in this series, and he hits the first pitch in the left field for a leadoff hit. So against Cologne, who's always in the strike zone, Utley was ready, and that's his eighth hit in 18 career at bats against Cologne. Well, we've seen something common here from uh, the Dodger hitters who have struggled here at Dodger Stadium. We see a lot of left handed hitters trying to go to left field. The Dodgers have scored three runs or fewer in 12 straight home games 
including the first three games in this series. Here's Corey Seager, four for ten with a couple of doubles in the series so far. And Seager drills one into right for a base hit. Utley will go first to third. So two pitches, two hits, and the Dodgers are first and third, and nobody out. Two pitches up in the strike zone now by Bart. And both jumped on by the Dodgers. That's got to let Bart know and the Mets that they're coming out and going to be aggressive. And boy, you have to be impressed with Seeger the last few nights, right? Ball down the middle, but still you got to hit it. A beautiful swing. Well, we've seen a hit from line to line in this series. So an early scoring chance for the Dodgers. Justin Turner will step in. Turner didn't start last night. He's had an oddly unproductive start to his year. 105 at bats, only six runs batted in. He's got a prime RBI chance here. One for six in this series. And the first pitch slider is fouled off. So three hitters all attacking the first pitch. Yeah, I mean he he throws strikes. That's all he throws. The difference between him and Kershaw, who throws strikes, also is Kershaw throws more assortment of pitches. With Bart, you're mostly going to get fastballs, so you have to be ready to go. Good approach. I'm I'm always surprised when teams don't do it. I, mean, I don't think I've ever heard myself say this, but usually you'll trade two for one here, one run for two outs. Okay, definitely will, but against Kershaw, sometimes that, that no. might. I don't think you have a choice. That's but right. You're, but you're right. That <laughs> might be enough. It's already been a game recently where Kershaw won one nothing when he drove in the only run. So. As the defense, uh, Lexus defense, Cespedes, Lagares, and Granderson against the left-hander. Right Cabrera, Walker, and Campbell. Right's back in there. Campbell moved from third to first, and Kevin Plowecki behind the plate. Long could use a strikeout ahead one and two on Turner. Adrian Gonzalez waiting on deck. Utley at third, Seeger at first. And Turner lines one in the left. Three straight hits for the Dodgers, and they have the game's first run. Utley comes in to score, and just like that, one nothing LA. Well, we've seen this happen to Bart before. Early in the games, and I think a lot of it has to do with being an older pitcher. This is a little changeup. Again, up in the strike zone and down the middle. There's two things you usually see from Bart. If he's up early, he's going to be in trouble. And two, when he comes off a seven, eight, nine inning effort, sometimes he's in trouble rebounding four days later. So the Dodgers with a chance to really put the hammer down against Cologne in the first inning. Three straight hits, and now Adrian Gonzalez, who's four for ten in this series, his bat has revived over the last couple of days. And again, the loan is up with the first pitch. Let's see what Gonzalez has done against Cologne. So he barked in a a big mess, and he never know it by his demeanor. Gonzalez takes a strike one on one. I mean, you try not to tell yourself this, but when you come into a game against an elite pitcher, Gary, you're really thinking of matching zeros for as long as you can. Well, here's a spot where what Bard wants more than anything else is that ground ball double play. Any ground ball at an infield, you're going to double up Gonzalez. Comes inside and misses two and one. Adrian Gonzalez since his first full season in 2006 has played more games than any player in the major leagues. One thousand six hundred and twenty four over the last ten years plus. And the RBI is nine straight seasons. He's never never been on the disabled list. Wow. And in this day and age that in and of itself is an enormous feat for an everyday player over ten years. Two one to Gonzalez. Flies one out to right. Granderson coming over hard, and he gets there. And back to second base goes Seager. I don't know if Seager didn't read that ball well, but he should be on third base. Well, I do have to say that Curtis really made that play seem a lot harder than it was. It was up there a long time, 
but he was in right center so he had a long way to go. But uh, you're right Gary uh, Seeger should have played that as a base to base. If it drops in then he just goes to third instead he was trying to play it halfway and he doesn't have a lot of speed but Curtis was in no position for him not to, to tag and take third base. Well, I mean teams routinely run on Curtis's arm so if Seeger yeah. had the awareness to go back and tag he would easily have gotten to third. Here's Grandal first and second one out. Grandal two for nine in the series the two hits a double and a home run. And he takes up and away for ball one. The way this inning began, if, if Long can get out of it with one run, I think he would be thrilled. I really think that base running mistake by Seeger is a, a young person's mistake. You don't want to make a mistake instead of being very aggressive. You want to reward the hitter who came up and hit the ball to the right side by taking the extra base. You get the third base with one out and give your team an opportunity to score without a hit. I mean, huge base running gaffe there. Rondal smacks one to deep right center. Forget it. That is way out of here. Yes, Mike Rondal with a monstrous three run homer. His third homer of the year, and the Dodgers have put up a four spot against Bartolo Colon in the opening inning. Well, that makes Seeger's base running moot. Yes, I thought I was just going to say that. What was I talking about? <laughs> Well, Grandal um, missed the home run batting right handed and now has hit two and two nights. One against Syndergaard, and this one was a blast to right center of Cologne. I mean, that's halfway up the pavilion, well out into right center field. It's got to be over 440 feet. So it's 4 0 LA, not Jock Peterson. Classic left handed swing just beautiful ball down great follow through like Roger Maris with that <laughs> follow through. Nine. Uh, yes exactly now, this presents a little bit of a problem now okay the Mets are down they're facing Kershaw. You could say to yourself they brought a new pitcher up today in Sean Gil Martin. But you're going to Colorado you don't want to use all your pitchers in this game so even though. Cologne looks like he doesn't have it today. He might have to go a little deeper than you'd want him to. David Wright making a play on the right side of the infield, and that's the second out. You know what I'm saying, Gary? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, and I think Bart probably knows that. This is not the first time we have seen him ambush in the first inning in Southern California. Remember that game in Anaheim a oh, couple of years ago? That's right. That was hard to believe that was worse. Well, he gave up what? Three home runs in the first inning? I that thought game? four total, yeah. Three home runs in first. And of course for for Bart that was uh, especially troubling because he had won a Cy Young as an angel. Here's Yasiel Puig two for 12 in the series and he pops one five. Another one swinging at first pitch. That's it hard and Cabrera with a great diving stop to end the inning. That ball was tailing away from his dribble, and he was able to reel it in to get Cologne through the first. But the Dodgers put up a four spot and lead four nothing after one.
With four runs, do we? <laughs> uh, Clayton Kershaw struck out a pair in a hitless first. Bartolo Colon not as fortunate. Gives up three straight hits and then a three run homer to Grandal. And so Kershaw with a cornucopia of runs to work with. Neil Walker leads off. First time in 13 games that the Dodgers have scored more than three runs in a home game. And they do it with their ace on the mound. Well, <laughs> look at that. Never lost. Never. When the Dodgers have scored four. Never. I mean, Tim Hudson had that great record right when he got four. He was like at least had four losses. Exactly. <laughs> He's never lost. <laughs> no, there's always got to be a first time. Wow. That uh, start we were talking about with uh, with Cologne and An and Los Angeles, Anaheim, five innings pitch, 11 hits, nine runs, and four home runs. Mm -hmm. Neil Walker pops one foul. Let's check in with Steve Gelb. Steve. Gary, we spoke with a lot of the players in today's starting lineup for the Mets just to get a feel for what they think separates Clayton Kershaw from the rest. And basically, they all had different answers, which shows you just how dangerous of a guy he is. Neil Walker, for one, said for him, it's the delivery. He's got such a funky delivery from the left side. Most guys come from a three quarter angle, but Kershaw comes over the top, gives the ball that extra down movement. And from the right side, as Walker is right now, says you can really pound you in on the hands with those down and in pitches. You know Steve to add what you're saying uh, Clayton does something that no other pitcher I've ever seen does. He hovers that right foot at the very bottom of his windup hovered down there and that's the delay and kick that really makes it difficult for the hitters to pick up. Strikes out Walker with a slider. So three strikeouts in the first five batters for Kershaw. I mean it's so unique he's able to stop with that foot maybe six inches off the ground and then proceed the throw. So it's almost like it's coming. No, wait a minute. Now it's coming. So that deception added to great stuff, added to huge insides. I mean, that can go on and on. Now Juan Lagares hitting 304 against lefties so far this year. And he swings at the first one and flies it to shallow left center. In comes Hernandez, and there are two out. I've never seen anyone do this before. It takes such great balance, and he's such a big man. So once he lifts that big leg kick, watch that right foot. Just hover, stop. And then he proceeds to the plate. That is the deception that he has that no other pitcher who's ever, ever played the game has ever done. The only thing I could closely Compare it to would be what Rob Nen used to do. He bounced that front foot. That's right. Which would throw off the hitter's timing, but it's got to be so much more difficult to not put that foot down and have it dangle like that. Well, you know how strong you have to be to have that kind of balance. So not only you know does he have his great stuff, but but he has the balance that very few pitchers have. Like it takes a curveball for a strike and so on too. For you kids at home, try it right now. Try the wind up and then it's about to throw. Hold your foot down there for a, a second. Impossible to do or very hard to do. Not for Clayton. Well, it's going to be especially hard for the kids to do when they're in bed. Oh, are they in bed now? Yeah, well, I know I was in bed as a kid. Kids stay up a little later down there. Maybe the older kids. Older kids okay. for whom, you know, the semester may have just ended. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, 2 to Plowecki. And he struck him out with a slider. Four strikeouts in the first two innings for Kershaw. And he's on top of his game. And he's got himself a 4 nothing lead.
sunset That's the last house. couple of nights. Well, we figured we'd bring you some L.A. factoids. There were uh, 44 people when they founded L.A. in 1781. They took down four letters from the Hollywood sign. What else we got running? L.A. and San Francisco moving closer together. <laughs> San Andreas Fault. It doesn't mean it takes less time to drive no. from one to the other. It took me almost two hours to go from Santa Monica to here today. I mean, as the crow flies, what is it? Uh, 11 miles, 10 miles, 12 miles, whatever it is. So like driving across town on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Kika Hernandez pops one up. And Cabrera makes the call. One out. Well, this is an, an amazing ballpark because in this ravine they have not only this beautiful ballpark, we talked about the, the mountains yesterday, but I mean they have 40 to 50,000 people here every night, and there's cars for as far as you can see, and then once the game's over, if the for some Dodger fans in my field it's over now. You start seeing the, the back of the cars leave the red lights. So many. Clayton Kershaw taking his turn at bat. Well when um, when they built this place Walter O'Malley had a great idea. He wanted fans to be able to park at the level of the stadium where they were going to be sitting. So there's parking just outside the upper deck. Yeah. And there's also parking just outside the lower deck. Because the uh, the land undulates, it's it's a brilliant concept. I know. I mean, I get dropped off. You do too. At level seven right. every day, mm -hmm. and we have to come down a couple levels to get here to our booth. Kershaw four hits this year, a couple of RBIs. Fouls one off two and two. That's what it looks like from above. Parking as far as the eye can see, right. and. and Right next to downtown, which is an amazing thing that that they were able to acquire this land for as little as they did, given the proximity to downtown L.A. Well, they wanted a ball team here, and uh, they knew what they were doing. Dodgers might have cheated a couple of shepherds. Well, you know, it's Chinatown. <laughs> but this was a goat pasture. <laughs> speed drilled foul. Well, it's hard to believe because it looks so good, but this is the third oldest stadium in use in the major leagues. It's right next to uh, Griffith Park, which is one of the greatest places to play golf. There's 36 holes, hike, there's a zoo there. 3 2 coming, and Kershaw strikes out on the fastball. First strike out of the night for Cologne. You saw that graphic that all the most of the oldest ones are from here in California. It makes sense because the, of the nice weather. Well, how about you compare this to the one in Oakland? Right? There's no comparison because this stadium was privately owned yes. and privately maintained, and they've done an amazing job of keeping it pristine for over 50 years. I would have to say, though, when I played in Oakland before they put up the football. Part of the stadium, Mount Davis. Yes, Mount Davis. It was um, it was a beautiful place to play. Flowers in the in the left field and center, left center and right center field. But you didn't have the uh, the sewage issues that they no, of course they contend with no, now. No, it was it was prime time then. <laughs> Utley oh. smacks one to deep right field. Grandison takes a look, and that's gone. Chase Utley's second home run of the year. And the Dodgers second home run of the night. And Cologne being smacked around. It's 5-0 L.A. I mean, always the most, I think, interesting swing of his generation of players. He's a great player, and it's almost like he's playing hockey a little bit. It's more like a hockey swing than a baseball swing. But generates a tremendous amount of power. Well, the two home runs against Cologne tonight have been absolutely crushed. Grandal in the first, Utley here in the second. Corey Seager had a base hit and scored a run in the first inning.
And there's that cutter that we saw a couple of starts ago that Cologne said he didn't throw because he used to hurt his arm, but he used it a couple of times in one start. Tried it there, still upstairs. He used that against the Braves when he threw those eight scoreless innings. Freddie Freeman he used it against. Mm -hmm. To left and overcomes Cespedes to grab it. That retires the side, but Utley's home run expands the Dodgers' lead. Malone taking it on the chin, 5 0 after two. We'll give it a game. Eric they must have had the Abe Lincoln uh, look working there for a while. Clayton Kershaw in the flesh. <laughs> Eric Campbell will lead off for the Mets in the third. Campbell playing first base tonight. Lucas Duda sitting against the left hander. And hits the first pitch foul. I asked Terry Collins about Lucas Duda's struggles against lefties this year, and you know he's at a loss to understand it because Lucas was so good against lefties, especially early last year when there were questions about his ability to be in the lineup every day. But those have now resurfaced. As Terry could do was to say, "Well, we really haven't faced very many lefties early in the year." Well, uh, this is my opinion. It has nothing to do with Terry. Just my opinion. This is where Lucas is from, Southern California. Going against one of the elite pitchers in the game. Campbell grounds one to Seeger, and the four-on target went away in front of his home folks, and Campbell gets a start. To me, that's that. If I if I had to sit on the bench. I, I, it would drive me crazy. It would make me a little angry. Not that he doesn't deserve it, but it would still make me angry. Well, now Cologne gets his first turn of the night. A little luster taken off since he's in a 5 0 hole, but it is his first game since his memorable home run in Saturday in San Diego. So affable, though. He and Grandal uh, had some words. I, 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 don't, I could never talk to a guy who just hit a, a three run bomb off you, but. That's Bart. I don't think I'd ever compare your personality. <laughs> no, no. I wish I had more Bart's personality, to tell you the truth. So Bert, uh, Bart is lying in wait. Kershaw throws a couple of pitches, neither of which Colon had any intention of swinging at. Just like he did against James Shields. Perhaps he'll go the entire at bat without taking his bat off the shoulder. Strike three called, so Cologne never swings. And Kershaw has five strikeouts first time through the batting order. Two out. Well, how about those numbers? Lowest career ERA for pitchers who've thrown at least a thousand innings. 
and uh, some of the greatest names in the history of the game. Wow. And Kershaw sits right at the pinnacle. I mean, unprecedented ERA numbers. Here's Granderson who struck out his first time up. Pedro rank in there. It's got to be fairly close with the amazing years he had. Uh, you know, yeah, we're leaving in the beginning too. So also, you know, he he was so much better. He and Maddox, yeah, were so much better than the league, but they pitched in an era where the numbers were very inflated. Can you imagine what Pedro pitched today? Oh. Like right in the beginning of his career, strike out 15 a night. Three to Granderson, who struck out his first time up. And then threw up under someone's chin every once a game? Oh, big, big guys who wouldn't even show up at the park. <laughs> and Curtis takes a strike, three and one. MLB.TV Premium is the number one live streaming sports service. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. MLB.TV Premium includes a free subscription to Ed Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Three and two to Granderson with two out. And Curtis grounds one into the shift. And Utley there to make the play side retired. Pitcher on top of his game, three hitless innings for Kershaw. For the Dodgers on a crystal clear night in LA, a little bit warmer than it's been the last few days. Bartolo Colon's been on the hot seat right from the start. Three straight hits to start the game, then a three run homer by Yasmani Grandal put Colon in an early hole. Justin Turner drove in the first of those runs, and he takes a slider off the plate for ball one. I've seen this with Colon. He gets hit hard, and all of a sudden he starts breaking out. The breaking stuff that he doesn't throw nearly as much when he's going good. Honestly, he looked the same way in San Diego. Remember, he gave up two hits in the first two innings, and uh, and righted the ship. So a lot of times he will start slow, and that happens a lot of times for older pitchers. And I get asked well, why. Well, you know, sometimes it takes a little longer to get uh, everything going. Going to be 43 what in a few days, right? May 24th, so. A little over a week and a half away. And Turner goes down swinging. Second strikeout for Cologne. One down in the third. 
Time for greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T Mobile. Well, the Mets head to Colorado after the game today. Nolan Arenado with a go ahead home run for the Rockies yesterday leads the National League with 13. And then the big series with the Nationals at City Field, and then the Brewers come in. There's Adrian Gonzalez who flying to right his first time up. So um, I remember James Shields was a little perturbed after he gave up the home run to Colon yes. in San Diego. Well, he seems to have responded well. He threw seven scoreless innings tonight against Milwaukee. That's drilled into right field, a base hit for Gonzalez. Well, he was perturbed because he kept getting the same question. What was it like to give up a home run to Bartolo Colon? After a while, he said, that's enough. Next question, man. That's that cutter right in the middle of the plate, though. And uh, the Mets have gotten Gonzalez hot. See, I like the better reaction to Cologne was the one that Noah Syndergaard tweeted last yeah, night. Yeah, I saw that. He said, Bartolo is inspiring me to be a better man. <laughs> Like that. It was. As Monty Grandal had a big three run homer his first time up. Well, I mean, starting with Cologne, the Mets pitchers were on a ridiculous roll of hitting. Even if uh, or its pitching is not up to snuff so far tonight. That's the tweet of the game brought to you by Toyota. Inspiring me to be a better man. So, Pearl Jam in there. If you uh, if you look at Cologne's home run, Syndergaard's two homers, Harvey's double, Matz's double, the Met pitching staff has five extra base hits in the last five games. You know how rare that is. The last team to do that to get five extra base hits in a span of five games from their pitchers, the 1963 Washington Senators. Who had only eight extra base hits from their pitchers the entire season, <laughs> but they had five in a five game span. They got hot at the same time. Right. Remember, though, as we can see tonight, pitching first, hitting second. Right. Randall flies one out to left center. This one's playable for Ligaris. And that's the second out. Or as Terry Collins said today, I asked him, you know, are you less likely to bunt in regular <laughs> bunting situations for their pitchers when they're going like this? He said, remember. They're good hitting pitchers. They're not good hitters. <laughs> well, I don't know if you can to say that about Syndergaard, to tell you the truth, but I know what he's saying. There was an old series of kids' baseball books, and I, I've completely forgotten the name of the books or the author, but there was a character named Russell Poole. And Russell oh, Poole yeah. was a great pitcher and a great hitter, and they called him. When he was pitching, they called him Pool the Jewel. Yeah. And when he was hitting, they called him Russell the Muscle. <laughs> and that's what Syndergaard appears to be. Oh, a Cologne-esque losing of the helmet for Jock Peterson. Yeah, that that would uh, that would not go over well with me if I was on the mound. I mean, you've given up five points already. Uh, hellacious swing by Peterson on the first pitch. Um, his next pitch, he would be on his fanny. Would not go over well at all. You can take as many big cuts as you want, but not like that. He pops one up. Granderson in shallow right. In to play it, and that retires the side. A hit and one left. After three in LA, five nothing Dodgers.
becoming one of New York's biggest stars. Get an inside look at Noah Syndergaard's rise to the top and the struggles he faced along the way on Mets Insider, presented by WB Mason Sunday at 7:30, only on SNY. As Dribble Cabrera leads off the fourth against Clayton Kershaw, who has yet to allow a hit. That's about one base runner in the first three innings. A walk to David Wright in the first. Kershaw has struck out five. He got Cabrera on a ground ball the third his first time up. Kershaw, the Alpha and Omega of the Dodgers <laughs> pitching staff. Well, they had a one two punch last year with Granky here, but not this year so far. So now they only have the Alpha. Ada uh, looked very vulnerable last night, didn't he? Toward the hole, and that'll sneak through for a base hit. And Cabrera has the Mets' first hit of the night. And I'll bring up David Wright, who walked his first time up. Kershaw usually when he faces right handed hitters the first time through the lineup likes to pound him in fastball in straight fastball again inside this one fouled back by David then he goes away and tried to work him with a cutter a straight fastball that he missed and he came back with a cutter in that missed and good eye by David to work that walk rare walk by Kershaw David has now walked in 11 straight games which is a new personal best for him. So even though that batting average is at 240, his on base percentage coming into the night was 392. Well, David attacks that first pitch fastball and fouls it back. Joanna Cespedes waits to hit next. Funny to have a throw over with a five nothing game doesn't seem to make any sense. Especially with a guy who does not steal bases aboard at first. And slide it down to right a ball and strike. So we always think of Kershaw as a big strikeout guy right he's like Syndergaard has been a power pitcher his whole career. He has worked himself to a place where he has a slide step to the plate. No one can steal bases or practically no one against Kershaw unless you just try to guess. No leg kick just straight to the plate with that right front foot. Well the the ability to hold runners is something that often comes to pitchers as their career yeah. progresses. I, I was interested in reading about Bartolo Colon and how much difficulty he had early in his career holding runners and now he's one of the best in the game. Well, in those days, you know, he was generating 95 plus too. Two and two today. Well, the last pitch is uh, a cutter down and in that David took before, but not able to lay off there. It's a delivery. Watch it. Just a slide step. I mean, that's got to be a, a just barely over one. To the plate, which is extremely low. One five is a high number. One is a great number. One second. Guys. Almost like he just falls toward home plate. Rare at first and nobody out. And right lays off. And he runs the count full. So David with. Too long at bats here against Kershaw. Drew the walk the first time up. That Cespedes is to follow. You have to figure David's going to get a fastball here. Leading up to this one, the Dodgers had a fairly substantial chance of winning every time Kershaw and Greinke went to the mound. Of course, Greinke is now pitching in Arizona. And Kershaw strikes out right for the first out of the inning. Six strikeouts now for Kershaw. 
And he didn't get the fastball. He did not. <laughs> Got the cutter again. And the bottom drops out of it. I think you're right. I, I think David thought he was going to get a fastball too. So now Cespedes who struck out his first time up. Manis came into the day tied for the National League lead in RBIs with 31 third in the league in slugging percentage came into the day with the same slugging percentage as Noah Syndergaard. <laughs> Bounced down toward third a foul ball. Well whatever category you want to check out. Yeah. Kershaw is sitting at or near the top. Well, we failed to mention yesterday and we had all that talk about Noah and Walt Terrell. It was Walt's 58th birthday yesterday. I trust he enjoyed that. <laughs> one on one to Cespedes. I, I, I knew Walt for three seasons. He was one of the best pitchers I ever played with. And he, he does not care. No, it's like his record. He's just not not into that kind of stuff. Hit toward the middle. Seeger gets over the flip to Utley and the high throw. Gonzalez stays on the bag for the 6-4-3 double play. That gets Kershaw through the top of the four. It's still five nothing L.A. Home fourth inning, Yasiel Puig leads off for the Dodgers. Puig was robbed of a hit his first time up, a diving catch of a line drive by his dribble Cabrera. Puig is just two for 13 in this series, but he has hit some balls well that have resulted in outs. And Cologne tries to tease him with a slider, and it's 2 0. Bart got stung in the first inning for four runs, three of them on a Yasmani Grandal home run. Chase Utley added a home run in the second to give Clayton Kershaw a big early cushion. Three straight sliders. I don't know if I've ever seen Bartolo throw three straight sliders. It's almost as unusual as seeing a pitcher throwing six straight sliders last night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Swinging 3 0, oh, and Tweet pops one up. And that'll come back out of play. By the way, Pilecki had no idea. I know. Where the ball was. I was wondering why he didn't run after it. On the 
outside corner three and two. Well, you always hope you can come back in a game, but Cologne's goal right now is to suck up enough innings yeah. to save the bullpen. You mentioned the Mets called up Sean Gilmartin today, but he threw over 90 pitches on Sunday for Vegas. 3 2 coming. That's it. Back to Cologne. He snares it on a short hop and throws out Queek. <laughs> like it's nothing. Watch him look at him, too. One hopper snares it. And watch Bart watch at him. Look at him. Come on now, run. Here we go. <laughs> Let's make sure that Puig at least expends a little energy. <laughs> That's another hard hit ball by Puig. The results in and out. He's had more than his share. We saw him head in hands earlier in the series, yeah. sitting in that dugout after an out. Uh, he continues to hit the ball like that. He'll be fine. His plate discipline has been a lot better than we've seen it in the past. He seems to be in a better mood today. Maybe it's because of the fishing video that they showed before the game. <laughs> that, was, that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. They showed Adrian Gonzalez and uh, Puig and uh, who else was on the trip? I don't know, but someone asked Puig if he's ever been fishing before. And he said, he came over in a boat, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Down to third. David Wright with the overhand throw, and he gets Hernandez. First time we've seen David throw tonight, and showing off that his arm angle can stay up tonight's twisted but true fact brought to you by twisted tea the hard iced tea that tastes like real iced tea <laughs> well they compared the final quarter mile for the Kentucky Derby winner to Bart's home run trot and Nyquist won <laughs> but only by a little now remember uh, Puig also said he said I came out a boat from Cuba hello <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean he was very engaging in that video, it was. Which, which is uh, was fun to watch. Kershaw struck out his first time up. And Cologne gets ahead of him on two. And he's been an enigma since the day he arrived with the Dodgers. Broke in with such a splash. Looked like he was going to be a superstar. Still is on defense. Still trying to figure it out at the plate. Fly ball, well hit to left center, but back in the gap goes Lagaris, and he runs it down to end the inning. First one, two, three inning of the night for Bartolo Colon as he gets Kershaw on the fly ball. Five nothing LA after four. It's down 5 nothing. We'll have Neil Walker leading off against Clayton Kershaw. Bartolo Colon has settled in nicely after his early woes and is trying to get some depth in this game now. 
Well, Kershaw's allowed just one hit through the first four. One walk, six strikeouts. Ho hum. Yeah, he's filling my page full of K's. Get to City Field Family Sunday, May 22nd. The Mets square off against the Brewers at 110. The first 15,000 fans will receive a bat and ball set as part of Major League Baseball's Play Ball Weekend. After the game, all kids 12 and under can run the bases in the Mr. Med Dash, courtesy of Northwell Health. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash Family Sundays. Walker struck out his first time up, and he hits one right at Utley. Plays the in between hop and throws out Walker, one pitch and one out. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Tri Honda. Hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on the 2016 models. By People's United Bank NA, see what know how can do for you. And by Planet Fitness, home of the judgment free zone. Duke of Flatbush. Hitting them deep at Evans Field. Duke Snyder. I mean, this is the only time I can say, Gary, you and I are both too young to have seen Evans Field or the Polo Browns. I actually went to a football game at the Polo oh, Browns. Did. I never made it to a baseball game there. I was five years old and the, the Jets were playing their last season there. Their first year as the Jets after they were the Titans. Yeah. They got shut out like 56 to nothing. All I remember was it was really cold and I really wanted to leave. SOJ in your first game? Yeah, well, <laughs> it starts early. <laughs> <laughs> Juan Lagares flied out his first time up. Takes a curveball outside, two and one. Kershaw has four shutout innings. He's only thrown really one good curveball. That was to Granderson for the strikeout. His uh, his strikeout to walk ratio has suffered tonight. He's now at four walks and 70 strikeouts for the year. Not quite the 23 to one that it was when the game began. In the air to left field, Hernandez broke in. Now he has to go back to make the catch. That ball sounded as though it was a broken bat by Lagares, and so Hernandez took a step in, but the ball carried, and he stayed with it. He's really an adventure out there. He can do a lot of good stuff. Throw you out. He had two assists in, a, in the first game of this series. But you know what? If you make the play, that's enough. You mentioned earlier that left field's been kind of a rotating circus for. Dave Roberts early this year because he lost Andre Ethier to a broken leg. So he's played Carl Crawford out there. He's played Hernandez out there trying to figure out the best combination. Let's check in with Steve Gelb. Steve? Well, guys, according to Kevin Plowecki, what sets Clayton Kershaw apart is that 12 to 6 curveball that you guys have been speaking of already tonight. He said when it comes out of his hands, it's at such a high point that automatically, just instinctually, you give up on the pitch. You say that's a ball. And then of course it comes back down across the plate. He says it totally throws off your balance because it can come at any time. And again, initially you think it's a ball, so you have to get yourself ready again in mid at bat. The curveball looks like it's coming down from Pluto, <laughs> which by the way was discovered by Clayton Kershaw's great uncle. That's right. Did you know that? Okay, yes, I did. Clyde Tombaugh discovered the once planet, now sort of planet, so, yeah. Pluto. So he's, you know, he's got astronomical bloodlines. No, it's, yeah, it's that greatness in his family forever. <laughs> Clayton Kershaw, when I hear that name, it sounds like a great southern fictional writer, doesn't it? We're up in the Dallas area. And a curveball, which Pulecki feared, has him frozen. Seven strikeouts for Kershaw through the first five innings. Halfway through in L.A., 5 nothing Dodgers.
freezing Kevin Flecky to end the last half inning. Well what's amazing about him is that that ball seems to go up before it comes down. It's a, it's an amazing pitch and there's a few things you can do when you're throwing a, throwing a curveball. You can shorten your stride and you get your arm up quicker all those kind of things. But I think what. As Utley picks up his third hit of the night. Leading off in the home fifth. I think what Colo uh, what um, Kershaw does which I really like. Most guys when they throw a curveball, okay, they'll have this grip and they pull down on the on the breaking ball. But what he does, hopefully you can see this, when he pulls down, he pushes up with his thumb and the ball casts up. So when he throws it, it goes up, catches, and then it starts down. Most guys just pull it down, his cast up, and then comes down. That's what makes it so unusual and such a big break. Now have other people tried to do that? No, you can definitely try to do it, but it's a, it's an innate uh, talent. That he has, and plus, Seager launches one out to right center. This one will be playable for Granderson, and that's the first out. Plus, the other thing is, if you don't have the right arm strength and the ability to get it to tumble quickly, you're going to have a big curveball, but it'll never be called for a strike. It'll be too big. You can't keep it in the strike zone. That last one, the Pulwecki, didn't have to be a strike because it starts so high and breaks so much. That umpires sometimes have a hard time calling it. It was interesting because Noah Syndergaard was talking the other day about making the transition from being a guy who used his curveball as his primary breaking pitch to using his slider. And one of the things he said is it's hard to get umpires to call strikes on the curveball. So true. And his arm angle is. That's about as over the top as you can throw. I mean, Jim Palmer to me was the guy that threw as over the top as you're going to see. And that's how, why he gets the more over the top you throw, the more you're going to get that 12 to 6 kind of break. And Noah's right. Because I, when I first came up, I threw a 12 to 6 breaking ball and I couldn't get a call. So I started to throw a little kind of 2 to 8 breaking ball that was called all the time. Behind on Justin Turner, 2 0. Turner had an RBI single back in the first. Jerry Blevins, first man up in the Mets bullpen. Jalone's pitch count is still low, but he's due a turn it bad in the next half inning and home run in San Diego notwithstanding. Down five nothing. Terry's probably going to want to bat for. Him. I think in this kind of game, you'd be happy to get five innings out of Bart. Adrian the, Gonzalez on deck. Unless the Mets rally, you know, you have to cover only eight innings tonight. Say the most important task for the Mets is to get Kershaw out of the game. But A, he's only thrown 61 pitches through five innings, so he may not be getting him out of the game. And B, the Dodger bullpen all of a sudden has kicked it in gear yeah, the last have. few days. They've thrown 15 consecutive innings without allowing an earned run. And this has not been a great offensive display in the series for the Mets at all. Well, they got saved by their pitchers, which is <laughs> what happened often this time last year. Off the corner to Turner and it's three and two. And he had Syndergaard last night with the four RBIs. He had Mats with the RBI double Monday night. That's about enormous chances where they've left multiple runners on base where they could have expanded a lead or come back. But that Dr. Bullpen has really done a great job, particularly Lewis Coleman, who's been a revelation in this series. Five hitters faced, five strikeouts. That's good, right? Yeah. <laughs> Even better than Kershaw. Utley at first and one out. Three and two to Turner. Utley runs and Turner flies one out to right. Granderson chasing back to the track and he makes the catch. And Utley heads back to first. Turner giving that ball a ride to the opposite field, but that's the second out. Good swing by Turner. I thought the ball was going to carry a little more than that, but nice play by Curtis getting back there. Not a hard play, 
But that ball did carry a little bit in this Los Angeles night. Now Adrian Gonzalez who had a base hit to right field his last time up one for two on the night. Just some hellacious swings I mean, all game long. Right from the first pitch. Utley swung at the first pitch got a base hit Seager swung at the second pitch of the game got a base hit and, and Bart has tried to uh, change it up a little bit with the slider but he can't throw for a strike so what can he do back to the fastball gets it in on Gonzalez so he pulls it foul beyond the reach of the ball boy so scary every time the ball goes in the stands. The last time you bowled. Um, a year ago, spring training. Oh, you do? Do you go every year? In spring training, go uh, once. You know, there's the bowling alley yeah. in Duffy's. That's right. Mm. Not much to do in Port St. Lucie. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and if they, any of the kids are down there, they they like to go. They'd love to go bowling, yeah. right? Are you a good bowler? Or? There was a time when I was acceptable. Let's just say that my skills have deteriorated. Are you like Jackie Gleason? You have your own bowling ball, in uh, bag, and no. <laughs> Funny-looking shoes. I do have to say, bowling alleys though always seem to have the best burgers and fries. I've always been more partial to the. Um, to the arcade game. Oh, okay. A little uh, air hockey. Maybe. <laughs> I fancy myself a pretty good air hockey. And Bart goes to the changeup to strike out Gonzalez and end the inning. Third strikeout for Cologne. He's made his way through five, but it's Clayton Kershaw who's on top in this game. Five nothing as we go to the sixth. All right, guys, time for our baseball. So nothing Eric Campbell on to face Clayton Kershaw and the guys were talking earlier in the game about when Kershaw has runners on base that slide step his quickness to the plate how unique it is Eric Campbell said that's what sets him apart in his mind that he actually might be better with runners on base than when he's pitching out of the windup and as Campbell puts it he's so quick to the plate 
that it makes the fastball get on you really quickly and you have to quicken up your load time which then makes you susceptible as a hitter to the off speed stuff. I think it's interesting that you ask a clubhouse full of guys what makes this guy so tough and they all say different things. Yeah. Which gives you an idea just how tough he really is. Uh, it tells you that they have no idea. That's what it tells you. <laughs> Campbell grounded to short his first time up. I mean the great pitchers it's really hard for hitters to talk about because they don't want to you know I remember I said to Ryan Sandberg and uh, Keith Hernandez last year somewhere and I said boy you know so and so has an unhittable slider. And they both looked at me like my head had fallen off because they were saying it's unhittable. It's got to cross the plate at some point. That's how hitters think. Doesn't matter how good the pitcher is. Now Alejandro Diaz is going to bat for Bartolo Colon. So Bart is out after five innings. Gave up five runs and seven hits. No walks, three strikeouts, a couple of home runs. But it maybe shows how much respect that players have that hitters can talk about Kershaw. Because a lot of times hitters don't want to talk about pitchers and how good they are because they don't want to tip their hand. Well, I show think any vulnerability. Right. I yeah. think that's it more than anything else. Hitting is such a mind game. <laughs> and you have to, correct me if I'm wrong, go in with supreme confidence. Yeah. And if you don't, you're beaten before you step in the batter's Oh, spot. absolutely. One and one to Deaza. By the way, the Mets now are playing with a short bench because they put Wilmer Flores on the disabled list and called up Sean Gilmartin, who is currently warming up in the Mets bullpen, getting ready to come in. So if the Mets get into the late innings of a close game, and Terry Collins said this has already happened half a dozen times this year, the Mets will get their pitchers. Into spikes and get loose for the possibility they might be called upon to pinch hit. Yeah. And the curveball freezes Deaza for the eighth strikeout of the night for Clayton Kershaw. Two out and nobody out. Let's check in with Kareth Burke in the studio for a game break brought to you by your local Honda dealers. Good to see things are back to normal for the Braves. Now two and seventeen at home after they won last night. There's some talk there for a while uh, after the Braves left City Field that Freddie Gonzalez's job was in trouble, and I don't know how you can how hold him accountable. <laughs> that roster. And then they just traded away one of his starting pitchers. Yeah. To a note of Granderson. Well, Kershaw not only is dominant, but he doesn't even give you a, a breath. 57% of his innings, he gets the side out one, two, three. Including three times tonight, going for four. But Granderson drills one toward the right field corner, and that's down for a base hit and rolls to the wall. And Curtis pulls it at second base with a two out double. So the Mets have their second hit of the night, Granderson's sixth double of the year. Well, it's so rare that he doesn't hit his spot, and this one, well, it's just a little up, and Curtis didn't miss it. We well, kind of ran around it out there. He was looking to get that before it hit the wall so he could gun one into second base. That's what he thinks about all the time That's out right. there, how he can show off his arm. So the Mets with a runner in scoring position for the first time tonight. And as Dribble Cabrera, who had the Mets' first hit, a ground single to right in the fourth, comes to bat. Cabrera's hit was just his second in this series, two for 14. Randerson at second and two out. 
but Cabrera continues to shine every day in the field. You know what's interesting is that different pitchers get swing and misses in different ways. We watched Noah Syndergaard last night. He can throw a 99 mile an hour fastball right down the middle and have hitters swing and miss. But what Kershaw does with that cutter, he gives the illusion that it starts as a strike and it never ends up in the strike zone. That's where he gets a lot of swing and misses, especially against right handed hitters. His 20 strikeout game, Max Scherzer got 33 swings and misses, which is the most in a game this year. The most for any pitcher in the last 15 years was 35, which Clayton Kershaw did last year. Can't even imagine that in the game. Put in perspective how the game has changed, and Joe DiMaggio won his first MVP in 1931. He hit, 39, sorry, he hit 381. Struck out that time, that year, 20 times. Same number that Scherzer got last night. I mean, Tony Gwynn had five straight years and never struck out 20 times. <laughs> Granderson at second and two out, and Cabrera lays off the high fastball and runs the count full. David Wright would be next. Kershaw's walked one tonight. First batter he's walked in the last four starts. That went to right in the first inning. He struck out eight. 77 pitches with two out in the sixth. Working with a big lead. Three and two to S. Dribble. And Cabrera takes the fastball strike three call. Well, he was looking for something else. And he got the heater and he knew he'd been had. Kershaw right to the outside corner, his ninth strikeout. All right, Dr. Fans, it is that time. Come to the catch Can't believe how hard this is. This is superhero discrimination. Excuse me. Taxi. Taxi. Right here. And this would be a lot easier if we had Uber. <laughs> <laughs> Noah Syndergaard on the streets of New York is Thor. 
Sean Gilmartin on to pitch. His first outing of the year called up from Las Vegas today. Well, you talked about Sunday. He's been pitching well in Las Vegas. See his numbers. 92 pitches, though, on Sunday. So coming back on some short rest to get eat up some innings here for the Mets. Just turned 26 years old a few days ago. Had a very successful rookie year last year as a Rule 5 pick. Mets had to keep him all year, but optioned him out this year to be that guy they could bring up with some innings under his belt. And he took the bull by the horns. I mean, his numbers. Considering it was Vegas, That's were right. tremendous. 2.48 ERA in that Pacific Coast League. Well, he's a he's a, uh, a pitcher uh, in the sense that he's not overpowering. Got a good curveball, good changeup, throws the ball to spots. Grandal hit the three-run homer in the first inning against Cologne, and he hits one into the shift. Walker throwing him out, one away. Anyway, you can see Noah Syndergaard on the streets of New York as Thor on an all new episode of the SNY.TV digital series, The Amazing Life, presented by Coca Cola. Check out the full episode and more at SNY.TV slash Coca Cola. So Noah hasn't spent a lot of time in the city. He might have been trying to catch a cab during the changeover. You know, most New Yorkers know that's a hard time to get a cab. Okay, so it, it raised. Alarm bells when it was revealed after the game last night that Noah had made another trip to the city <laughs> to have his elbow checked out after his start against the Giants a couple of weeks ago. Turned out to be nothing. But, you know, right now with Stephen Matz on the disabled yeah. list with a little flare up in his elbow, every little dissonant note about these guys in their arms certainly. Raises the alarm bell. Well, that used, there used to be a time you'd go in the trainer and say, "Hey, my elbow's just not feeling great. Can I get a rub or something?" They're like, "Yeah, uh, well, you know, after the everyday players, maybe I can give you 15, 20 minutes." <laughs> now, if you say something, you're going straight uh, to the doctors. And listen, I think I'm all for protecting guys' arms because unlike everyday players who can maybe get by with. An arm being sore, you know, David's arm is a little sore right now. Play, pitchers, if their arm's sore, they're done. Well, I know you, as as I, have begun reading Jeff Passan's book, The Arm, yes, yeah. which is all about the uh, you know the, the waves of Tommy John surgeries that have hit baseball over the last few years, and tries to dig as deep as it can to try and figure out what the answers are and what the questions should be and whether anything that anybody's doing right now to try and prevent it is working which the answer appears yeah. to be no. But you know these are valuable commodities these guys and they're pitching elbows more than anything else. Another one into the shift diving stop by David Wright from his knees and he got him. Check that that was Cabrera playing on the right side. They've got me confused. It's all right. <laughs> but Cabrera with a terrific play. But another exclamation point beside his name. Would have changed your call because he's so routine in making these great plays? Maybe. <laughs> well, I, like I said uh, in the first inning, I, I put a star up when someone makes a great play. And every night it's one or two for Cabrera. So Gil Martin's come in, gotten a couple of ground ball outs. Now he faces Yasiel Puig, who's hit two balls hard without result. Well, you don't see the jump, but one of the things that Cabrera has when he dives, he's got great body control. You know, he, he's diving, but also the glove is in the correct position. He still catches it nice and softly. And what Terry Collins said of him today was his hands are off the charts. Yeah, they are. You know, and I think it's really hard. Uh, sitting in the seat to describe uh, hands, and I, th I think it's hard for even Keith to. You either have them or you don't. You can become a better fielder with hard work, but the guys that are at the top echelon, they've had it since they were six years old. We did not swing too many. Well, there's one consequence of Sean Gilmartin coming back to the big leagues. Kevin Kears has to. Uh, has to stock the stirrups. <laughs> That's right. Maybe he carries his own everywhere. Well, first time up tonight, we get a bullet that he thought was going to be a base hit. Let's see how he's in control of his body. 
and he's able to jump up and get something on the throw. That one he didn't because it was a line drive. Quick second time up, it was Cologne who snared his hard grounder back to the mound. You stars, huh? Yeah. What are you? Exclamation. Oh, okay. Got him with a changeup. So Gil Martin with a successful first inning in the big leagues this season. Kershaw back to the mound with a five nothing lead. Hard worker he is, and, and the hours he puts in to getting ready for your start. But for me, it's not hard work that separates him; it's consistent work. And this guy doesn't miss a day, doesn't miss a thing. Um, knows exactly what's, what he wants to do going into every day. Um, you know, he I already know what his tomorrow is going to look like. His day after start, with the amount of poles he's going to run in the outfield, the way he's going to work out in the, in the weight room, um, what he's going to throw. He doesn't take a day off. He doesn't cut corners, um, and then he just mentally lives in that five-day cycle to prepare for each start. David Wright lifts the first one out to right center field. Yasiel Puig has the call. One out. Well it's going to be true of any elite athlete. You not only have to have the talent but work ethic goes right along with that. Well, A.J. Ellis is one of the smarter guys in the game and you see all the numbers of course uh, not only on the field off the field he does a lot of things in Africa and other countries. Uh, I mean he is a, a poster boy but for who you'd want a great player to to act like but um, and, and listen I'm not even on this ball club I know exactly the polls he does the day before he does his sprints I mean he has it down to a science and he never misses a day it's a uh, it's not that easy your Cespedes is struck out and grounded into a double play well you saw on that graphic Roberto Clemente award winner and that's for all the work that he's done in, in Zambia over in Africa yeah. feeding children and um, Made many, many trips over there with his wife Ellen. That nasty curveball working, and it's 0 and 2. When the uh, major leaguers went to Cuba this uh, this spring, he went to. He wanted to. Uh, he wanted to be part of it. And drew a crowd having a catch in the hotel courtyard That's because he didn't want to miss a day of throwing. That's and ordinary Cubans who never thought they'd ever have a chance. Got to watch Clayton Kershaw throwing a baseball and we're awed at the sight. See that? On the 0 2 pitch, he missed it and he was angry at himself for whatever mechanical issue he had there to not execute the pitch. So he goes to the curveball. Seeger far to his left and he throws out Cespedes two out. Mm -hmm. 
This is the first batter, Granderson on a big curveball. Pulwecki goes to down. Deaza, that wasn't even fair. And I know you folks at home, you know, you're here to watch the Mets uh, come back. Maybe they will. But the whole thing is that every once in a while, I remember when I was a kid, every once in a while, and, and I grew up in Massachusetts, and the Red Sox would go out to play the Angels. And I would stay up because you had to watch Tanana. You had to watch Ryan. Um, this guy's better. You can't miss a start by this guy if you love the game. Walker takes a curveball out of the strike zone. Walker struck out and grounded out tonight. Well, he's the top. I mean, I, I know Jake Arrieta won the Cy Young last year, but you, you, you take the best pitcher of this generation, and it's this guy. Body of work. It's tremendous amount of years, tremendous amount of consistency. At some point, Jacob DeGrom, Matt Harvey, Noah Syndergaard, this is who they want to be, this guy. And by the way, they're all sitting and watching him. Oh tonight. yeah, oh yeah. Including Matt Harvey, who could have gone ahead of the team to Colorado, but declined to do so because he wanted to stay with the team. Good. And also, probably parenthetically, Sh watch Kershaw. Watch Kershaw, and a thing you mentioned before, short bench. You know, if you're in a tight game, and that's going to pitch tonight. In Colorado Mets will arrive very late in Denver after flying tonight. Walker pops it up. And Gonzalez there to grab it. Seven scoreless innings for Clayton Kershaw. Stretch time in L.A. 5 nothing Dodgers. Home seventh inning, Kike Hernandez leads off against Sean Gilmartin and skies one out to right field. Granderson eases back. One pitch and one out for Gilmartin in the home seventh. Let's look at tonight's Horizon <laughs> trivia question. Max Scherzer, 20 strikeouts, set the Nats Expos franchise record. Whose record did he break? I think I know this one. Nats Expos. Oh, yeah, I know, I know what it is. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Gary just wrote it, guys, at home. And I, <laughs> I, and I said, yes, you got it right. He had 18, right? Yes, he did. There's Kershaw, who has struck out and fly deep to left center. 
He did it a little like Dave Freed handwriting though. It took me a little little second there. To I don't ever expect anybody to be able to read my handwriting. The difference is Dave Freed is writing it so other people can read it. That's right. And he can't write. Yeah, you're just writing for yourself. Back to Gil Martin. And Gil Martin's retired his first five batters. Um, you know our buddy Dave O'Brien who does the Red Sox games? Yeah, OB. You, you ever look at his scorecard? I have not. You could look at it right side up or upside down, and you wouldn't be sure which way was right. Really? It's completely incomprehensible. It's like he writes in hieroglyphics. Should have been a doctor. <laughs> Maybe in another life. <laughs> Two out and nobody on that. Chase Utley is three for three. Slider in for a strike. Utley let off the game. First pitch base hit against Cologne. Hit a home run against Cologne in the second. Had another base hit with one out of the fifth. And if the Mets were ever going to try to extract a little revenge against Chase Utley, this would be the spot. You know, uh, I disagree with, uh, with you there in the sense that it's too late. It's too late. It's the fourth game. If you wanted to show him something, you would have hit him the first time up. Well, it doesn't appear as though Gil Martin has any intention of doing it anyway. That could be wrong. You know, I mean, to me, it's, it's out of contact, uh, context now, to me. Well, the only reason I said that yeah. is because every time he's come up prior to this, it's been a close game. I agree with, with you on that one. And Gil Martin more concerned in his first outing of the year about getting the hitter out. And he's two and two on Utley. So it appears as though um, the Mets did get their revenge by winning the series, which is what they said publicly, yeah. and I guess that's what they've stuck to. But you think it would have changed if Ruben Tejada was still on the team? I, I can't answer that. Yeah, I can't either. And a terrific outing for Gil Martin, six up and six down, with a couple of strikeouts after seven. Kershaw back with a five nothing lead. Back again, and they're looking for new challengers. Think you can beat them at Mets Trivia? Audition for the next Beat the Booth from home. For details on how to online video audition for Beat the Booth, check out SNY.TV today. So we're watching between innings. Yeah. Adam Wainwright pitching for the Cardinals in Anaheim. He's in the bottom of the fifth. He's got an 8 7 lead trying to get his five innings in to qualify for a win. It's a little sad to watch, to be honest. 
Juan Lagares takes a strike from Clayton Kershaw. Well, we've seen it a couple times now. Personally, we've seen Jake Peavy and Matt Cain, uh, elite pitchers of, of their time, struggle. And now Wainwright has struggled all season long, coming back from that Achilles tendon. One and one to Lagares. Well, the good news is he just got through five. The bad news is he gave up seven runs. Meanwhile, Zach, Zach Ranky's struggling again tonight against the Giants. His ERA is five and a half. Yeah. Matched up against Johnny Cueto in Arizona. Bouncing ball for Seeger. And he throws out the Garris one away. Let's check in with the studio. Kareth Burke has another game break brought to you by the New York State Smokers Quit Line. So if you're the Diamondbacks, do you reside in Panic City? <laughs> I mean, just spent two hundred million dollars on this pitcher, who has been decidedly mediocre so far. Check swing roller by Plawecki right to the bag for Gonzalez, two out. Well, he's making a million dollars a start, right? Thirty million, thirty starts. Um, listen, you couldn't say it was a bad signing. Because he was a great pitcher. He has been a great pitcher his entire career. I always think long term contracts are always bad contracts. But that being said, early in his career, he was the lead guy for Kansas City. I think he really flourished here, being in the shadow of this great pitcher, Kershaw, and was able to do his thing in the out of the spotlight. Kershaw had it all in himself. You know, Zach's a different kind of personality. And now every time he doesn't pitch well there's 20 people around your locker what's going on what's wrong with you this or that and it's certainly uh, something that he's never been comfortable with. It's going to be fascinating to see whether he can kick it in gear as the year goes forward. Because that's you know that's a tough situation. There's a lot expected from that Arizona team they lost A.J. Pollock on the eve of the season which didn't help them. But look what he did as a dodge. Oh, that's what they paid for. And two to Campbell. What's powered about giving big contracts is that you're you're giving a big contract to someone on what they did, mm -hmm. and you expect them to continue to do what they did, and that doesn't always happen. Lucas Dude is out on deck. He'll pinch hit if Campbell can keep the inning going. Well, particularly for pitchers over 30. Yes. I mean, there's a shelf life. There's a window of greatness and uh, the real great ones like a Kershaw knock on wood it's, it's going to be 15 years plus uses the slider to strike out Campbell fifth straight double digit strikeout game for Kershaw is 10th of the night.
Coors Field in Denver against the Rockies. Coverage begins at 7.30 tomorrow on SNY. Corey Seager leading off in the home eighth inning. Your city probables for the series in Colorado. Matt Harvey, Logan Verrett, Jacob DeGrom for the Mets. John Gray, Eddie Butler, Tyler Chatwood for the Rockies. Mets faced Gray last year. He's still looking for his first big league win. Those young guys, Gray and Butler, have pitched great on the road and horrible at Coors Field, which is why the Rockies had lost seven straight home games before they finally won yesterday. And Tyler Chatwood is, is good one game and not so good the next. He's kind of 50 50 right now. Rockies are used to winning at home and losing on the road. It's gone the other way around so far this year. And Seeger lays off the slider from Gilmartin one and two. For more on the Rockies, let's check in with Steve. There yeah, you said it. They have been really, really bad at home. Five and ten this season have the Rockies been, but the pitching staff just looks really spooked by the altitude. A 7.24 ERA overall for the pitchers, as opposed to a three and a half, a sub three and a half ERA on the road for the pitching staff. So these guys clearly are, are being affected by Coors Field. And you mentioned the starting pitcher tomorrow night. For the Rockies, John Gray, a 9.20 ERA in seven career starts at Coors Field. Well, Gray's last start was in San Francisco, seven innings, no runs, one hit. So if he can ever duplicate that at home, the Rockies will have had something. He's supposed to be their, their top pitching prospect. Meanwhile, the Rockies' offense, well, Trevor Story's been a huge story. Nolan Arenado is making his case, you know, to be one of the best players yeah. in baseball. Top, top five players. And uh, Mark Reynolds has given them a nice yeah. boost, playing first base most days. Popped up behind the plate. Lewecki back. And runs out of room. You know, I know that in spring training, their pitching coach Steve Foster put a lot of work into trying to address to all their young pitchers about being more aggressive, and and it, it to me it almost like the more they talk about trying to pitch better at home, the worse it gets. It's a it's a fine line. I don't know what the answer is. It's a it's a unique place to play. Where baseball in that ballpark is a different kind of baseball. What they've tried to work on with their young starters, and I don't know if this makes any sense at all, mm -hmm. is trying to get them to pitch more of a, on a downhill plane to try and get more ground balls. But I don't know if you can if you can do that re uh, retrofit a pitcher like that. Yeah, to me, that's nonsense. You can't do that. You have a way of throwing. You don't have a way of throwing. You can sink the ball. You can't sink the ball. Um, you know what you could do if you wanted to. You throw the grass high. And get sinker ball pitchers like Billy Swift in the in the day. He had success at in Colorado in the 90s. Cabrera waiting for Seeger's pop up and puts it away for the first down. Seven up and seven down for Gil Martin in relief. Let's answer our Verizon trivia question. Whose record did Scherzer break? I got Bill Gullis. Yeah, Gullis. Yeah, Bill Gullison was a. A huge man, big uh, strapping guy who could throw real hard, hard slider, hard fastball. The Expos had such an yeah. incredible pitching staff in those days with uh, Charlie Lee and no hitter. Steve Rogers. I mean, they they could pitch up and down their rotation. There's Justin Turner taking outside. Scott Sanderson, Bryn Smith, Andy McGaffigan. You can go on and on and on. I know I'm missing. Mm -hmm. Turner had an RBI single back in the first, one for three. What about this name? Joe Hesketh. Joe Hesketh, the <laughs> skinny lefty. That's right. Well, how about Dan Worthen? Dan Worthen in the day. He's a terrific arm who, you know, blew out his arm very quickly after a few 150 pitch outings. <laughs> but Dan had, Dan could throw hard at a good hook. Floyd Yeomans for a short time after he was traded from the Mets over. Um, to the Expos and the Gary Carter trade, they were going over some of uh, Dan Worthen's games in the minor leagues. Some of them 175 pitches, 151 pitches. <laughs> like 
Most guys, a lot of guys in those days, once you hurt your arm, you were done. And nobody had much concern. No, they didn't. Because if you blew out your arm, there was somebody ready to take your spot, and they didn't have the huge investments yeah. in players that they have now. So they were all pretty fungible. Yeah. That's driven to left center field. Lagaris will have to play it on a hop. And Turner's got his second hit of the night. First base runner against Gilmartin, who had retired seven in a row in relief. Turner's hit three balls hard now tonight. The fly out to right field and two base hits. This one looked like one of the hits from the division series last year. He wore out that left center field gap. Turner had a great series. He had 10 hits in the five games, including six doubles. DeGrom couldn't get him out. I think he was five for six against right. DeGrom in that series. Here's Gonzalez, who's one for three. And the fastball at the knees for a strike. Bartolo Colon went five, allowed five runs, seven hits, no walks, three strikeouts, two home runs. Gil Martin just up from Vegas today. And trying to eat up the rest of the innings to leave everybody else in that bullpen fresh going into Colorado. And there are tonight's starters brought to you by People's United Bank. Kershaw at the top of his game. He has been spectacular. Yeah, no contest tonight. What'd you say? Five straight times now? Ten strikeouts or more. First time any Dodger has ever done that. There's the red lights we were talking about. Cars are leaving. Yeah, you remember the um, the picture of those tail lights leaving in Game One of the World Series in 1988? And the Gibson home run, right? There were a lot of empty seats in this ballpark when Gibson took Eckersley deep. And now, if you ask people, there are a million and a half people <laughs> at that game. <laughs> it was some uh, some pop star who threw out the first pitch tonight. They were interviewing him on the scoreboard, and he said, oh, yeah, I was I was in the upper deck that night." Yeah, yeah, well, sure, yeah. sure you <laughs> Still can't believe that ball went out of the ballpark. By the way, swinging on one leg, one-handed. The way he hit it. I just saw something. I, 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 I haven't been able to listen to it yet, but they had like a forum where Kirk Gibson and Eckersley were talking about the the home run and what led up to it and this and that. Like a TED talk. Yeah, like a TED talk, TED talk or New York Times talk or whatever. Mm -hmm. Gonzalez swings and misses at the slider. And Sean Gilmartin has his third strikeout in relief. He has struck out uh, Gonzalez twice in a row. First time on a fastball and now on a curveball. Yes, funny Well, if the Mets and Dodgers don't meet in the postseason, this is going to be uh, the last time that we get to see Ben Scully in the ballpark. Doesn't travel to New York for uh, for the road games. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm a little wistful about this. Yeah, I, I feel the, I feel the same way. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I was able to listen to your 15-minute interview with, with Vinny the other day, and um, I don't know about you, but that's got to be something you'll remember for all your days. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was magnificent, and he's been magnificent for 67 years. He has been the Dodgers. And as Terry Collins said, the Dodgers will never be the same after Vinny retires at the end of this year.
Who's that? Coming up tonight after the post game, it's Geico Sports Night. We'll go one on one with New Jets draft pick Christian Hackenberg, and we'll have baseball and basketball as well. All coming up tonight on Geico Sports Night after the post game. Clayton Kershaw trying to throw a complete game shutout against the Mets for the second straight season. He did it at City Field last July, and he's three outs away tonight. Lucas Duda pinch hitting to start the ninth inning. Last year it was a three hit shutout for Kershaw. He's allowed two hits tonight. And the curveball oh. had due to fool, but it missed one and one. Now he's just showing off. Five straight games, he struck out ten or more since they moved the mound to 60 feet six inches. No Dodger had ever done that. Not Koufax, not Drysdale, not Hideo Nomo, not Ramon Martinez, nobody but Kershaw. One two coming and the curveball struck him out. That's 11 for Kershaw one down in the night. Let's check out what's coming up on WB Mason post game live Gary Apple Nelson Figueroa guys. All right, gentlemen, it's been Kershaw's world tonight. He's retired eight in a row. Here's Granderson. I mean, really, I feel like he's showing off now, showing this curveball. Bottom drops out, no chance for Lucas. Granderson has one of the two mad hits tonight. He doubled his last time up. That'll be fun to be an infielder and watch a guy like Kershaw pitch because you get a great view from where Utley was. Thousand away. And Kershaw already has one shutout this year. It was a one nothing shutout where he drove in the only run. He's got 13 shutouts in his big league career. And 11 strikeouts tonight. And the curveball gets Granderson looking. Two man down. That's 12. Of the season now, Kershaw has walked four and struck out 76. Like he's from another planet. Yes, he is. Well, last night's game belonged to Noah Syndergaard. This one has been the property of Clayton Kershaw. That's down to their final out as Dribble Cabrera at the plate. Cabrera has one of the Mets two hits and he rips one in the left field for his second hit of the night. So Cabrera two for four and the Mets have their third hit and David Wright will get another turn at bat. Remember Cabrera took that fastball for a strike three in his last at bat. He wasn't taking it this time out in front. Base hit for a struble. Kershaw had 105 pitches through 112 his last outing in Toronto. David looking for his first hit in this series 0 for 2 tonight 0 for 9 in the series. Gonzalez will play behind Cabrera at first. And the fastball strike. Strike. Well, David had a pitch and missed it there. He's going to show off that curveball again. And Kershaw just balked. <laughs> and Cabrera will go to second. Just a little flinch. <laughs> the 
Up and away, one and two. If Wright can keep it going, you an assessment this would be next. Not even a hint of action in the Dodger bullpen. And the second guy the Mets have had the second base. Granderson with the double. And Cabrera getting the second on the box. One and two to right. And the curveball strikes him out, and that'll do it. 13 strikeouts for Clayton Kershaw. And for the second straight year, he throws a three hit shutout against the Mets. His 14th career shutout, his fifth consecutive game of 10 or more strikeouts. Clayton Kershaw at his dominant best as the Dodgers get a split of the four game series with a 5 0 win. Just no contest. D Ray now spins at 1.74 for Kershaw, who finally allows himself a little bit of a smile, and he has started the season on a roll. He's been the best pitcher in baseball over the last half decade, and he showed off exactly why tonight. His 119th win against 57 losses in his career, and the masterful Mr. Kershaw was all of that tonight against the New York Mets. Not such a good night for Bartolo Colon. He gave up four in the first, and that was plenty enough for Kershaw. As the Mets fall to four and four on the road trip, as Kershaw shuts him out on three hits and strikes out 13. Kershaw dominant. Dodgers win it five nothing. We'll come back with more from L.A. in just a moment.